um, in a previous uh, lecture, we ended up with the Morpheus theorem, which says that given the complex number z, which is equal to r and cos cosine of theta plus i sine theta, if you raise uh, z to the power n, where n is an integer, then you can write this as r to the n to brackets cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay? Good. Uh, of course, this, this, this means that, this also means that um, if I have cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, all of this raised to the power n will just be equal to this guy here, which is cosine of n theta, right? Plus i sine n theta. Okay? So this is also a statement of the Morpheus theorem. Yes. So in some books, this is what you see, in others you see this. But you have to say, so this implies that if I have uh, a complex number that is written in polar form, if I raise to the power n, I don't need to expand this. That is the power of this. I don't need to expand this using binomial expansions or um, you know, any expansion. <coughs> I can basically from here find, find the result of this by multiplying the argument of uh, the trick uh, functions cos and sine here by n, right? And I get cos and theta by i sine and theta. Okay? So, so that is uh, the Morpheus theorem. Now, uh, so for instance, let's do uh, some examples. Uh, for instance, giving a complex, complex number z to be equal to, let's say, 2 into brackets cosine of pi on 8 plus i sine of pi over 8. Find, uh, let's say, z raised to the power x. Okay, they are giving a complex number uh, like this. Now, without the Morris theorem, what you do is you could write this in a standard form, right? Convert all of this in the radians and then raise it to the power 8, expand this using binomial expansions, all right, Pascal triangle and all of that, and then you can get an estimate of what the value of z to the power 8 is. But now, thanks to the model, we can easily compute this, all right? So, given we already have the complex number in polar form, so it makes this easy. So, given this z to the power of 8 would just be equal to, if you like, all of this to the power 8, right? So, I'm going to have 2 to the power 8. This is cosine of pi on 8 plus i sine pi on 8. This is raised to the power 8. And that's just equal to 2 to the 8. I think it's 2, 5, 6. Okay? <clears throat> that check. And then, by using this, okay, I just need to multiply the arguments by the power. So this is just cosine of h times pi over h will just be pi plus i sine of pi. Of course, we can simplify x, right? But I can have to. Uh, this is 2, 5, 6. Uh, cosine of pi is negative 1. Um, sine pi is 0 times pi. So this is just 0. So all of that is equal to negative 2, 5, 6, right? So z to the power h. It's just equal to this. So that is how easy it is. Which means that, we're going to do a se second example soon, which means that if, uh, if you are given a complex number which is not in polar form, to apply this, you need to convert it to polar form. And then you can easily use that. So let's look at the second example here. So let's say I have, uh, so example again, Uh, let's get rid of this. <coughs> let z, let um, the complex number z to be equal to whatever negative root 3 minus i, fine, fine, okay, fine z raised to the power. Okay, so you're giving a complex number. So now it's not in polar form. But you want to find 0 to the power 3. Of course, one way of doing that is 
raise this to the power 3 and expand this to say for now. But we want to use R. We want to use the marvelous theorem. R. Find S using, let's do that, using the marvelous the marvelous theorem. Huh. All right. Without this, then of course you could just expand this with the power three and continue. Good. So, how do we do that? So first, write this in polar form. We already covered this in our previous lecture. Um, this is given by uh, negative root three is here and negative one. So. So your point is there. Now, we are not giving the, um, the, um, uh, any restriction for theta, all right? When that is not done, you have to assume that theta lies between negative pi and pi, or less than equal to negative pi and less than pi. Okay, so assume this if you are not, if you are not giving. If you are not told that theta lies between zero and two pi, you use this, <coughs> okay? So, which means that the angle we actually want, the argument we want for this, will be this angle here. This is what we want. Um, now, this is three. So, so, what you do is, you can compute this, call it alpha, right? And then, of course, you can take negative pi, because all of this is minus pi, right? If you add it to the angle here, you're going to get theta, all right? So here, tan alpha would be tan inverse of y over x, right? So that's negative 1 over negative root 3. Okay? So that's just tan inverse of 1 over root 3, which is just pi over 6. Okay? It's pi over 6. Therefore, the angle theta would just be equal to, if you like, pi over 6 minus pi. Or negative pi plus pi over 6, which will give you negative by pi over six. So the argument, all right, is this. And we can find the modulus, right? We know how to find the modulus. The modulus uh, are, this is equal to the square root of x squared. So that is negative root three squared, which is three plus negative 1 squared, which is 1, right? So that is the square root of 4, which is 2. Therefore, I can write this complex number in the form 2 into cosine of, the angle is negative 5 pi over 6, plus i sine of negative 5 pi over 6. Okay? So we have the complex number in polar form. Now that it's in polar form, we can easily apply the model theorem to find z raised to the power 3. Alright? So, therefore, from here, z to the power 3 will be this guy to the power 3. Uh, all of this, okay? So let me do this. Cosine of minus 5 pi over 6. I sine of negative 5 pi over 6. All of this raised to the power 3. This is 8. So, raised to the power 3, just take 3 and multiply by the argument, right? So, this is giving you cosine of, I'm going to have negative 5 pi. 3 cancels this, I have 2, right? I sine of cancels. This is negative 5 pi over, over 2. Okay? Um, of course, you can, you know, you can, you can rewrite this. Uh, Nicer way, you can write this as cosine of 5 pi over 2, cosine of negative is cos, this is minus i sine of 5 pi over 2, alright? Okay, so z to the power 3 is good. Now we can simplify this better. This is good, but we can simplify it. Note that 5 pi, note 5 pi over 2 is the same as actually 2 pi plus pi over 2, right? See that? So that's, you know, an additional 2 pi. So you can get rid of this and just replace this by pi over 2, right? This means that if I take the cosine of this, 
cosine of this is that's because of pi over 2. Right? It's theta is theta plus 2 pi n. Right? So, which implies that I can, I can, let me get rid of this here. Okay? Get rid of this. Which means that I can write z to the power 3 as 8 into cosine of pi over 2 minus pi sine of pi over 2. Okay? I mean, you can simplify it that I want to. Right? Cos 90, that's 0. Alright? Cosine of, um, I mean, sine of pi over 2, that is 1. So, in fact, this is just equal to 8 into this is 0 minus i. So, this is negative 8i. And this is the raised to the power 3. So, we simplify it together. Alright? Good. So, that is how you apply the Morris theorem to um, define the powers uh, of complex a complex number. Um, I'm going to do I have a few minutes to uh, to finish this so let me see if I can squeeze in one example okay let's see if we can squeeze this idea here so let's do one more example before we move on to something else so example use the Morris theorem to find z to the power 9 if z is equal to 1 plus i. Right? Okay, so do the same thing. Find, write this in, uh, in polar form, right? Uh, R there, R will be the absolute value of Z, which is square root of 1 plus 1, that is root 2. Okay? There are, there are modulus, no, the argument, right? Argument is 1 and 1, so this is here, 1, 1, beta here, right? Will be tangent of 1 over 1, so that's pi over 2, pi over 4, I should say. So this is tangent of 1. Over four. Therefore, I can write a complex number z to be equal to the modulus root two, two cosine of pi over four i sine of pi. So, so we are given it, given the complex number in the standard form. We turn it to a polar form, and then we can find uh, the power z to the power nine. Right. So now. We can do z raised to the power 9 will be equal to root 2 raised to the power 9, of course. If I raise this to the power 9, again, I will multiply this by 9, right? So I'm going to have cosine of 9 pi over 4, sine of 9 pi over 4, okay? Then we can, um, we can of course, so simplify it from there. Good. Well, let's simplify this first now. This we can write root 2 to the power 9 is the same as I mean, root 2 times root 2 to the power 8, right? And this is square root of 2. This is 2 raised to the power 1 half, right? So this is 2 to the power 4, which is 16, right? So that is uh, 16. 16 root 2. That is that's this. Now note here, 9, note also that 9 pi over 4 is the same as uh, 2 pi plus pi over 4. 8 plus this. Okay? Which means again, uh, instead of this, I can use this, right? Cosine of this is a cycle of 2 pi. So this is just the same as this. So I can replace the argument by pi over 4. Therefore, z raised to the power 9 will just be equal to the modulus is 16 root 2 cosine of pi over 4 i sine of pi 4. Of course, you can, you can simplify these guys if you have to. This is 16 root 2 
cosine of 45 degrees, right? Cos of pi over 2, pi over 4 is 1 over root 1 over root 2, right? This is um, 1 over root 2 as well, in case I'm not. So root 2 will multiply through and cancel this out. So finally, we're going to have 16 into 1 plus i. Okay? Therefore, z to the power 9 is equal to that guy. Alright? Okay. Now, in the, in the next lecture, we are going to look at trigonometric applications of the Morris theorem. We can actually use it to, um, to prove some of the trig identities that we are familiar with. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lecture.